The following program has been sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions. It's that time of year as school bells ring across the nation with kids of all ages ready to go back to school, wearing brand new clothes, tennis shoes, backpacks, a fresh haircut, and smiles from ear to ear. However, consider the contrast with the kids in those communities affected by poverty that have no other options, no choices, but to wear the hand-me-downs, the torn clothes, the shoes that are too small or too big and dirty, or cradling a paper bag used to carry their school supplies. Fred Jordan Missions looks to change that for kids headed back to school once again this year at the annual Back to School Extravaganza. It's truly a party on Skid Row, and we need your help to throw it. As FJM gives hundreds of brand new shoes from the Foot Locker, fresh, clean, new clothes, new backpacks, and new school supplies. And yes, even haircuts to the kids of Skid Row and the surrounding areas. We love the huge smiles and big hugs and even the tears of joy as precious kids pick out new shiny shoes, stock up on needed school supplies, and even select a brand new backpack. We invite you to be a part of this party and support this event with a financial gift, great or small. Your best gift will make a difference in the life of a child heading back to school. To give, safe and secure online, go to fjm.org or send a check to FJM, Box 12345, Covina, California, 91722. Do it now while it's on your heart. All gifts, no matter what the size, are so needed and greatly appreciated. Sometimes it takes history a long time to reveal where you get your strength. What an awesome day, a day to serve Jesus by serving others. We're here at a trailer park and uh, trucks just pulling up, volunteers by the dozens are behind me, about to give out food, necessary food, needed food. People are hungry, they're hungry for food. And today we're demonstrating God's love here in this trailer park with being the hands and feet of Jesus because of people's needs. But we're not only going to hand them out food, but we will be praying with them and sharing the hope of Jesus. Remember, we don't only demonstrate God's love by meeting the needs of the poor, the homeless, and the hungry, but we also provide hope because we share Jesus, who is the hope of the world, with all of those who we meet. So it's so exciting. Exciting always to serve Jesus by serving others. You know, many times people think that if they don't find their purpose right away in life, if they don't find their purpose when they're young and maybe in high school or college, they never will. For me, my purpose in life, I found very young. In fact, at 17, God called me and gave me a purpose to share the gospel to share his love, to let people know that Jesus loves them, that Jesus cares, that Jesus died for their sins. That if they would just believe and receive and trust in Jesus, they could be forgiven for all of their sins. Washed white as snow and have eternal life and go to heaven one day when this life is over. And so for me, it was very young. But let me tell you, it wasn't always easy. In fact, even though my calling 
My purpose in life was clear that I was going to serve Jesus by serving others, serve Jesus by serving the poor, serve Jesus and try to bring honor to his name by following him every day and sharing his love and the gospel message of hope. It wasn't always that easy. It was very difficult. You see, for me, I had a father, Fred Jordan, and a mother, Willie Jordan, who to me, I mean, they were like rock stars in the Christian leadership world. They were ones who were older, who had been doing it so long, and who seemed to really have it down. How to follow and honor God and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And you know, even though I know they weren't perfect, I really didn't see too many flaws in them ever because they honored Jesus, they followed Jesus, and they tried to obey Jesus in everything they did. But one thing now, as I'm older and I look back, they were older at the time. You see, my father was an older father. I was blessed to have an older father. And my six brothers and sisters also were blessed. Because I think about it, if my dad would have had us all when he was 20 and 25, I don't know that we would all be alive still. I think with all of the mischief and all of the craziness we put my mom and dad through, I think my dad might have, well, I won't say, but I think he might have, um, I just don't know that we would still be here because we got in so much trouble and we put them through some heartache. But you know, I look back and we were so blessed because my father was older. So he had already had so much experience. He had gained so much wisdom, but most of all, he learned the grace and the mercy from Jesus because he knew that in his own life, the mistakes that he made, when he blew it, when my grandfather, Jordan, who was a pastor, had to deal with my dad, Fred, when he messed up, he saw grace and he saw mercy out of my grandfather. And so I saw grace and mercy out of my father. You know, I feel very, very excited that I didn't start my family at 20 and 21 because I think it would have been really rough on them. Because as I was younger, I was very judgmental. I thought you either get it right or you're not following God. You either do it perfect or you're not following God. You either do it right, get it perfect, or you don't love God. But what a legalistic and what a wrong thought that was. And as I've gotten older and older, I've just realized that we all fall short. We all make mistakes. We all miss the mark. We all mess up. And that's why today, if you're struggling with purpose, if you're struggling with what is your purpose, it's never too late. There's a few things that I wrote down that I just want to encourage you with that what we need to do is persevere. What does that mean? We need to keep going, never give up, never quit. Because the only way I think that we can fail in life is if we throw up our hands and just quit and just stop and don't pursue God anymore and his plans and purposes. So I encourage you, never give up, never quit, persevere, press through it, and God will take you there and keep your faith and trust in Jesus and Jesus alone. In Isaiah 60, 22, it says this from God's word. When the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. You know, what I've learned is that God's timing is not our timing. God's ways are not our ways. And it's very clear because it says that in the Bible. And so when we realize that, when we realize that sometimes it's just not God's time yet for something to happen in our life. Sometimes we're not ready for the next step God has. And so we have to be patient and wait upon God. The other thing I wanted to share with you and, and, and what I've learned in my life is that you never mess up enough. You never do too many things that are wrong, that disobey God to where you're disqualified and thrown out of his plan or purpose for your life. You see, I did a lot of things in my life and I'll share those in just a minute a lot of things that would have disqualified me 
or I thought at the time disqualified me from ministry, disqualified me from even having a relationship with Jesus. And those were some detrimental and some hurtful thoughts and thought processes I had at the time that were faulty thinking. And I finally learned as God taught me and I sought him and, and I went after him and I just said, God help me. And I read his word and he spoke to me and he made things clear that with Jesus, all things are possible. And that his purpose, if I would just trust him, will be fulfilled. But I had to press on, forget the past and follow his plan. Stay tuned. We have got back to school coming up. One of our favorite times of year here um, on Skid Row, seeing children coming from all over the inner cities. And um, we're gonna be able to give them new backpacks, new outfits for school. And it's all made possible by all of the viewers and our, our impact partners. And just we, just we just can't thank you enough. And it's just, we're all gonna be able to, on, on events like this, it's like all of us get to um, experience the joy on each face, but it's fun that the people at home that love, pray, support, um, get to really be involved as well and see what a wonderful day this is gonna be. Joe, what is it like for you to be able to see thousands of kids? You know that when a kid has a new outfit and they're going back to school that they're gonna do better, they're gonna know better, they're gonna do better, they're gonna succeed a little bit more just because of that day of receiving these new gifts. I just wanna say thank you because back to school will literally change lives. If not for more than a day, hopefully, a week, a month, six months, because every time they look at those new shoes, that outfit, every time they remember that day of being loved and encouraged and being blessed, they're also going to remember the message of Jesus. Because that day, catered to kids and youth and teens, we're going to preach the gospel. We're going to share with these kids Kids, Jesus loves you. When you go to school, you don't need to be in fear that whatever happens at school, whether it's good or bad, it is going to be the end of your story. We, we need kids to know in their neighborhoods when they're scared and they're afraid because our world and our neighborhoods are kind of scary. There's a lot of evil in this world, but they need to know there's a God that's bigger than that. And we wanna give children and families that certainty of knowing that no matter what this crazy world will bring at us, that Jesus Christ loves them and has a plan for their life. And that's probably the most exciting thing for me. Mm, that's exciting. And again, we want to thank you at home for supporting this amazing ministry. And just know today that Jesus loves you no matter what you're going through today, no matter what you're facing. Remember that us here at Fred Jordan Mission, we love you. We appreciate you. And more importantly, God loves you. And he'll meet you right where you're at. God bless you. As I was sharing with you a few minutes ago, God has a purpose for our lives. And even though we feel like there's times that we disqualify ourselves, or we mess up or we do the wrong things. And there are those times when we feel like we, we, we will never get to God's purpose and we will never get to God's plan because we've just messed up too many times. But it's not true. You know, I told you in the beginning that when I was 17, I was called to ministry. God gave me a purpose of serving Him by serving others. But it wasn't always easy. There were many times as I went to play football in college and then I was a leader on campus. I was sharing the gospel and I was counseling and praying and I was helping older students. When I say older, I'm talking about like 21, 22, 23. But I was only 18 and 19. But it was overwhelming at times because I thought, wow, this calling is heavy. There's a lot of pressure with it. And I thought, man, I, I have to be like my dad. I have to fill his shoes. I, I have to be who he is. But at the time at 18 and 19, and I wanna encourage you with this, I, I was thinking the wrong thoughts. You see, my dad was 55 years older than I was. 
He had already lived 55 years more of life, being taught the Word of God, having the Holy Spirit guide him and lead him in ministry, learning from his mistakes, growing as God led him. And here I was at 18 thinking that I had to be somebody that I wasn't yet, like I had to already have arrived. But you know, I've realized now we never arrive. We just keep learning and growing and hopefully get wiser as we seek God and His plan for our lives. And so for a long time after that period of college, I, I kind of ran from God and my calling because it was scary to me that I was going to be responsible to take the message of hope, the message of the gospel, Jesus, to a broken and hurting world, to the lost. And I took it on myself as being all my responsibility. It was, it was my calling and I had to be the one to do it. But after running from God for many years and feeling guilt and shame and, and just feeling so discouraged that I would let God down over and over and over. And then by not following God in my calling for those years, I lived under a heavy discouragement that was almost depressing because I knew that I was supposed to be following God, serving God, honoring God, and taking Jesus to a hurting world. And yet I was running and I was hiding and partying and, and just rebellion because I was scared and I had fear and anxiety and worry that I would fail God. But then I realized one day as my dad told me before he died, son, it's not your responsibility. It's not your job. It's not up to you to fix yourself. Yes, Joe, you have to say yes to Jesus. You have to give him your all. You have to surrender your will to His will. But it's your job to do that, not your job to fix your life. God is able, God is capable. Jesus will take your life, and I've said it to you a thousand times. He can take your life that is upside down and turn it right side up. He can take your life that's a miserable mess and turn it into a miraculous miracle. But you have to allow Him to. And it was at that point I realized that I took all this pressure on myself. I thought I'd messed up too many times. And I lived in so much shame. And I finally just surrendered and said, Jesus, I can't do it, but you can. Jesus, I can't follow you and, and, and be faithful, but you can help me to. God, I can't be successful in being a pastor, a leader in ministry without you. I took all the burden off me and I gave it to God. And God's word says, cast your cares and your burdens upon him and he will care for you. And God did, I surrendered my life and a little saying that my dad used to say that he said when he was a kid, I said the same thing, sink, swim, heaven, hell, live or die. I'm going to follow Jesus. And when I fall, I'm going to get up. As another good friend of mine that played pro football, who's a great preacher, Oscar Rowan, would always tell me, said, Joe, if you fall down, if you hit your face on the ground, if you stumble and sin, get up, get over it, and get on with it. Because God has forgiveness for you. God has a purpose and a plan, and God will get you there. But you have to trust Him. You know, running and hiding from God, being afraid of his plan for your life, or even feeling at times like you're gonna miss out. I used to think as a teenager that I would miss out. If I followed God, I'd miss out on all the fun. But you know what I've realized? When you're in that world of fun, in the world of partying and whatever you're into, whether it's drugs or alcohol or sex or whatever it is, when you're caught up and you're bound in all of that, all it does is it binds you up and it puts you in a bondage that's not free. But when you realize that Jesus has a plan and a purpose for your life and you can honor and love him and live the great life, not that there's not gonna be problems or issues, but that Jesus will always be with you to carry you through those. 
that he can break every chain, that he's got a key to unlock every door that you need to walk through, and that he's got a lock big enough if you ask him to lock every door you shouldn't walk through, and you trust him, he can accomplish his plan and his purpose. Some people ask, well, how do I keep the hope? How do I keep the hope alive? And I say this, again, the Bible says, nothing is impossible with God. Jesus is our hope. He can take and make miracles in our lives every day if we'll trust him. There's nothing too great. Remember this, the battle belongs to the Lord, not us. I had to learn and I encourage you to learn to not fight your own battles, but let God fight your battles. To not think that you have to be the one that somehow victoriously gets through it on your own, but allow Jesus to give you victory and take you through it. If we would just trust his plan, his purpose for our lives and not our own, his word says that his good, pleasing and perfect will will be accomplished in our lives if we'll just trust him. His word also says in Jeremiah 29, 11, as I close, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. God's promises are real, they're certain, and they're true. God never goes back on his promises. Hold his promises, get into God's word and trust him with your life and the purpose he has for you, he will fulfill it if you will just allow him to and surrender your will and your plans to his. Always remember Philippians 4.13, one of my favorite verses, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Let me pray for you. And if you don't know Jesus today, and, and you, you're like, wow, I don't know how to find God's purpose because I don't know him. Just know this, God created you, he created me. And we sinned and we messed up. And yet he sent his son Jesus to this earth to die for us. And Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And then Jesus rose from the dead three days later. He's alive and he wants to bless you. He wants to save you. He wants to forgive you and give you eternal life. Jesus came here to forgive us, but we have to trust him. The Bible says if we would believe and receive that free gift of salvation and forgiveness, that we can have eternal life. So all you have to do is say a prayer like this, Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of my sins. I'm sorry, I I've sinned against you. Wash me white as snow, cover me with your blood. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Help me to walk with you and honor you every day of my life in Jesus' name, amen. And if you know Jesus and yet you're struggling with God's purpose, I wanna pray for you. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that all of those who are listening, that feel like maybe they've messed up too much or they've fallen short or they've let you down too many times, that you're a big God. You're able to forgive and move on. You're able to take our lives, even the messes that we've made of them, and still bring purpose and your plans out in our life if we would just trust you. So help everybody that hears my voice to follow you, to love you, to seek you and your purpose every day. And help us, Lord, to say yes to you every day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just as we're here today in Thermal serving and in LA right now at the mission serving, Jesus, by serving the least of these, God has a purpose for your life to serve him by blessing someone else in some way. God bless you. It's that time of year as school bells ring across the nation with kids of all ages ready to go back to school, wearing brand new clothes, tennis shoes, backpacks, a fresh haircut and smiles from ear to ear. However, consider the contrast with the kids in those communities affected by poverty that have no other options, no choices, but to wear the hand-me-downs, the torn clothes, the shoes that are too small or too big and dirty, or cradling a paper bag used to carry their school supplies. 
Fred Jordan Missions looks to change that for kids headed back to school once again this year at the annual back to school extravaganza. It's truly a party on Skid Row and we need your help to throw it. As FJM gives hundreds of brand new shoes from the Foot Locker, fresh clean new clothes, new backpacks, and new school supplies. And yes, even haircuts to the kids of Skid Row and the surrounding areas. We love the huge smiles and big hugs and even the tears of joy as precious kids pick out new shiny shoes, stock up on needed school supplies, and even select a brand new backpack. We invite you to be a part of this party and support this event with a financial gift, great or small. Your best gift will make a difference in the life of a child heading back to school. To give, safe and secure online, go to fjm.org or send a check to FJM Box 12345, Covina, California, 91722. Do it now while it's on your heart. All gifts, no matter what the size, are so needed and greatly appreciated. We want the world to know that Jesus loves us all, that he cares for us all, that he died for us all and has a plan and a purpose for all of us, if we will just trust him. And you're a part of that too. Thank you so much for helping us to be on the front lines and the hands and feet of Jesus. We love you and we're grateful. And my prayer, like I said earlier, for you is that you find that purpose, that perfect plan that God has for your life, where you can honor Jesus and bless others. There's nothing better. God bless you. FJM Mission has been giving hope to those on Skid Row for over 80 years. And we need your help to continue declaring and demonstrating the love of God. Donate right now online at fjm.org. Or if a stamp and snail mail is more your style, then please send your check to FJM 12345, Covina, California, 91722. Thank you. Will you join us in feeding hungry children and their families by phoning today, 844-FJM-FOOD or donating online, fjm.org. That's fjm.org. Or mail your check to Fred Jordan Mission, P.O. Box 12345, Covina, California, 91722. Please, will you help? Reach for The preceding program was sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions.